Okay, here we are. We've got uh, JD Bothma, and he's got um, coding Python for the greater good. Okay, so um, uh, data is also the new bacon, I heard. Thank you. It's completely halal, kosher. It's fine. Hi, I'm JD. I work at Code for South Africa here in Newlands, in, um, um, yeah, just down the road. Um, and, um, yeah. I'll tell you a little bit about what we do. Uh, a lot of it will be running through quite lightly through some of the projects we've done, just giving you an indication of the kind of things where technology is helping sort of developing um, communities and empowering communities. And I'll also dive into one project that I did um, as part of sort of a, a community hacking evening we run, um, where, where I think I'm doing something useful and it's a little bit of technical nerdery because we don't want to just have uh, fluffy stuff. Sometimes it's nice to see some code. Um, yeah. Um, so Code for South Africa used technology um, to promote informed decision making for positive social change. Um, we don't really want to tell people how they need to run their lives. We just want to give people the, um, the utilities they need to sort of develop their community and to help themselves uh, to make better decisions when they're voting or when they're campaigning for something. Um, yeah. Um, we also run a data journalism academy because a lot of informing people um, involves sort of the media. Uh, so we try to help journalists to um, to use data more effectively, to, to treat data as a source, um, which also means that they have to corroborate what they learn from the data. Um, but most of what I do is as a back-end developer, um, sometimes a bit of front-end as well. Uh, we live under a bridge. Uh, we're not trolls, but we do. I, I have a beard. Uh, I shower sometimes. Um, so that's the campground road bridge uh, that sort of separates Claremont and um, Newlands, I think. Um, and CodeBridge is kind of where we are. Uh, the phrase is kind of CodeBridge, a space for change. It's also a movement of sort of technology um, for the community. Um, yeah. So a light introduction of what we do. Uh, this is a silly little uh, Flask or Django website using SQL Alchemy. Someone figured out that there's a database that the government publishes of medicines, um, their key ingredients, and uh, their prices, the regulated prices in South Africa. And um, with this website, we're basically enabling people to, if they're prescribed a medicine, to figure out what are equivalent medicines that they could be taking, perhaps in different packaging or something, um, and it ends up being a lot cheaper. And the best way to figure out if someone is using your site is to turn it off. Or um, in our case, we broke it. And um, then a doctor emailed us and said, hi, um, when is the website coming back online? Because I use it daily to prescribe um, cheap generics to my patients who really can't afford brand name uh, medicines, uh, which was quite fun. Uh, this is a site called WasiMap. Actually, the map isn't the most important part here. Um, WasiMap is built on a tool um, called uh, Census Reporter, I think. Um, and basically, it's just a platform where you can uh, have different areas on a map uh, demarcated and uh, do some aggregation on the numbers there. Um, and we're using it to show census data from the, uh, the 2011 South African census and say, um, for example, uh, present in, a, in an accessible way um, how many people in a certain area um, have university education or, or high school education and so on. How many child-headed households there are in this area. Um, so, and then you can compare two regions next to each other. So I would compare, for example, the area I grew up in. And um, I was at a hackathon in, in uh, Kimberley, uh, Galashewe, and um, it's fascinating to see the different demographics and, and um, you, you start to kind of understand a lot of, of why things are the way they are just by sort of having quick access to this data and not just seeing it in a sort of spreadsheet. Um, cool thing about this project is uh, the, the, the thing it's made on uh, Census Reporter, the people just sort of put it on GitHub without thinking about it. And when, when uh, my colleagues who, who built the site asked them about it, they said, no, no, you probably don't want to use it. I mean, it's not that, that useful. It's, it's, we're not making it for other people to use yet. Um, but my colleagues went ahead because they, they realized they could actually use it. Um, and in the end, it, it, was, it, it really helped that, that it was available online. It saved us a lot of trouble um, just by providing a few key features and then um, 
doing what we want with it. So, so they were really surprised when they saw how much sort of traffic there was on our fork on, on GitHub and uh, that it's actually useful. So when in doubt, just put something public on, on GitHub and maybe someone will find it and find it useful. Um, this is one of the projects we're most proud of at um, Code for South Africa. Um, what you see here is an is a example of a poster, a paper poster that we produce. Um, the project is, um, citizen monitoring is, a, is not really the best name for it. It's, when no one's monitoring citizens here. The point of the project is um, Black Sash, a, a fantastic um, human rights organization in South Africa. We've been there for, for many, many years. Uh, they're helping local communities to monitor uh, service provision for those communities. So they would get local people to survey people using, for example, a clinic or a local government office or um, a, a SASA office and just ask questions like, how long did you uh, stand in the queue before you were served? Were the people friendly? Did someone ask you for a bribe? Did you know what documents you had to bring before you were here? And when you see how many people stand in the queue for six hours and they paid um, maybe 30 rand for the taxi to get there, then uh, that's a very important question. Um, and they do this sort of monitoring year on year. Every year, um, the results of this is uh, sort of boiled down to a poster like this. Well, I think this was the first year that the poster was created in this form. Um, and that, that goes back into the community. They, they meet with uh, the people providing the service and perhaps some sort of management of, of that organization uh, or, or government entity and figure out together what are the key issues in this community and how they can, can improve. And a year later, they can sort of see if, if that issue has been addressed. And um, I think in the bottom left, what you can see there is um, uh, no, that's, that's the wrong one. There's, there's one example where you can just clearly see uh, year on year um, a lot of people in, in one particular place didn't know which documents to bring and the next year they did. And it's, it's super simple, but I think to the, the actual people using this facility, it's, it's a big impact. Um, now, one of the key things about this project is that it's a paper poster. Uh, that gets sort of delivered into the community. Most of the people there don't have internet, they don't have um, um, computers or, or very little access to that. So putting it on the website uh, wouldn't have helped them very much. Um, they're iterating on the project, they're learning to, to work sort of in this way and uh, every year they learn, they adjust the survey slightly. So whatever can be compared, they compare and it's not a scientific survey, but it's useful. So the technology here is using an open source survey platform to, to aggregate the data with sort of off offline data collection that then just goes, gets uploaded when they have access. Um, and then a little script to do the, uh, the poster. And now after two years, this is the third year that is running in this form, um, we're finally making a website so that other people can learn about the, the approach, uh, also see the data, use the data, um, and in a few weeks I think we'll automate sort of making the posters as well. But someone still has to print it and take it to the community. Um, something we launched yesterday, Open Gazettes. Um, so government gazettes are published weekly and they're I think most people don't know about them. Uh, the only people I've spoken to that do know about them are, or it's usually lawyers. Um, it's things like um, public driving permits, uh, whether people change their names, um, or when a company is getting liquidated, and things like that. Um, so it sounds kind of stupid. To, to give you an indication of what a gazette looks like, um, this, is, this is one from uh, 2013. 2016 still looks like that. Um, and it's really dry, boring, um, difficult to read, not very electronic access. Um, but these are things that impact people. It's like zoning changes or, or requests for comment about the law. For example, the upcoming um, uh, nuclear plants, uh, they were published in small regional gazettes instead of national gazettes. I mean, perhaps ESCOM didn't want people to, to have access. Perhaps that they just um, uh, sort of thought, well, the, the, the plant is going to be in Eastern Cape, so let's just publish it there. The point being, uh, we can make it more accessible really easily by just putting it in a sort of a search interface, text search interface. Um, and on this platform, you can sort of set an alert so that as soon as there's a new gazette matching nuclear, you'll get an email, uh, and now you suddenly know. What I'd really like to add to this is um, it sort of pulling out addresses, so you can say, give me a... Um, 
uh, gazette that related to sort of 30 kilometers from my house. Uh, I think that would be really exciting, but it's all open source, so you're welcome to contribute. Um, yeah. Now, that's a lot of high tech, and a lot of the work we do is about presentation, but my, my boss likes to say one of the most pragmatic things we, we do is to do pip install XLS writer, because um, a lot of the people we work with, and that's government as well as um, NGOs, don't really know what analysis they want to do at the beginning of a project or early in a project. So the first thing you can do when you sort of have a data collection or you're collecting data is just um, put it in a spreadsheet and, and let them download it. Um, and then people can start playing with the data. Um, we don't really want to give extra training, but pivot tables are magical, guys. Um, so uh, this is an example where we, um, we started off just producing Excel spreadsheets. Um, so I think every month, uh, citizen journalists go to a few clinics around the country, and they check a government sort of mandated list of medicines that clinics should have, and um, sort of feedback which, which were out of stock. And for quite a few months, I think uh, about a year, um, we've just been producing a, a, a spreadsheet, give it back to Health E, which is the, um, the um, community newspaper that, um, that's uh, doing this project. And they've built up a relationship with the Department of Health in the government. And now the Department of Health actually expect this report of which me medicines are out of stock. And they use it as part of their decision making. And that's really, really big because the, the work we did here that enabled that is just use a open source um, survey platform collect the data for them, break it down into form that's sort of accessible to people, put it in Excel so that these people can go and play with the data. And then eventually we thought, well, okay, we know this works, let's put it online, uh, let other people play with the data as well. But the, the fancy stuff came later. Um, this is an extremely exciting project that's not launched yet. Um, this is not the exciting part. Uh, basically. The Treasury, one of the jobs of the Treasury is to um, collect financial uh, reports from every municipality to monitor how those municipalities are managing their finances. Um, and they've been publishing this online for about 10 years now as spreadsheets and PDFs, and no one knows about it, and I'll get into it later. Um, but also, it's really hard to use the data that's in spreadsheets. Um, so. Treasury approached us, uh, someone noticed sort of some of the work we do, and, and we've been working with Treasury to put this data in a database, make it available in a, an API where you can sort of slice and dice and aggregate um, and, and use the data more easily. You can get the data in JSON, so anyone can, um, can build a site on top of this if they want to. This is just the interface where you're kind of showing the structure of the data, you can select um, one or more municipalities in different periods, different kinds of numbers. Uh, it's showing budget as well as actual expenditure. Um, and there's audited actual, uh, which comes out sort of annually. And that's, um, yeah. Um, this is the cool part of this. Um, this is a site where we're using this API to make the data, the financial reporting from municipalities, hopefully understandable to the general society. So we're using standard, um, financial performance indicators like how much cash do you have in the bank, how much cash do you have in the bank relative to your budgeted expenditure for this period. Um, so the, the top one sort of tells you, uh, this is Chwane, Pretoria, has um, 0 0.6 months, so nine days of um, um, cash. In nine days, if they don't get money in, they're bankrupt. Um, in it's a bit more complex than that, but basically. And most people are just going to look at the smiley face, and that's fine. Once you start having a debate about it, you can say, well, uh, well, what does this really mean? And then there's this little, did you know? Uh, and if you want to dig down deeper, you can show the calculation, and that links back to this table view where you can get raw data, and if you really want to, you can download a, a, a spreadsheet. Um, so. The majority of the work here is working with civil society organizations and the treasury to understand this information, decompose it, present it in a useful way. Um, I was lucky enough to put together sort of the, the API of this and structure the data in the database. Um, 
but a lot of work goes into understanding how people can actually digest this information. So now, uh, anyone can just go on their mobile phone, this is a responsive site, and you're at a party and someone says, oh, well, this municipality is actually bankrupt, and you can say, well, actually, no, this is how much cash they've got. Um, and this is annual reporting, but there are some sort of uh, quarterly reports as well. Um, informed decision making. We need to communicate a lot in this country, and um, when people have access to data, I think they can sort of start having more productive conversations. So. While working with Treasury to understand this data, I got really frustrated in, in trying to understand the terms. Um, because they publish, in, in addition to the, the data from the municipalities, they publish um, guidelines for the municipalities of how they need to submit this data. Uh, and there's the Municipal Financial Management Act, I think, um, MFMA, um, which tells municipalities they have to submit this data. And then on this website, they have the reports. But Google hates this website, and I don't think it's the design. Um, but you can't Google for things that's on this website. Their search interface doesn't work. It, it sends you to an authentication thing. So to, to try and find some of the definitions that I needed, um, I had to crawl this with wget and grep, um, and then I found what I needed. But most people are not going to go to those <laughs> links. Um, so I thought we need to make this site accessible to Google. Um, so um, just an indication, a lot of the reports are sort of in these tables. Um, and there's a lot of resources here. Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of, of documents with very valuable, important information. Um, now, I think Part of the reason that this site doesn't work is that it's made with ASPX. Um, I don't know how many of you guys know this stuff, but there's this, they used to think that it's nice to create websites the same way you create um, um, sort of C or, or C++ um, visual applications. So every uh, time you click somewhere, you send the full window state back, and then you, they get, give you a new window state, and it builds. Um, so a link is actually, it, it is a link, but it doesn't actually contain the destination where you're going to. That, the destination you want is in the, in the query string. Um, the onclick, the JavaScript enter folder, takes the same link in a different encoding, and um, it does a HTTP post to then um, give you, take you to the next thing. So um, maybe that's why, oh, and then there's this uh, unique ID in every thing. So every time you load a new page, it's different. The links are different. And I'm sure Google just says, um, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I try to get, get hold of them, and, and some of the people at Treasury are really fantastic. But the, the webmaster for this just went, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, we, we, we want to make it work, but nothing ever happened by t trying to talk to him. So I decided, let's just solve this. So um, I made my own MFMA mirror, um, and it's a little Jekyll site. Um, I just scrape their site and uh, stick it into sort of YAML-headed files. Um, they have this text, text saying, as long as you're using it for non-commercial use, you're welcome to copy everything. So I started doing that. And the, I really want people to use the official one because it's more likely to be up to date and correct. Uh, so I try to push people back to their site. The point is just they need to find the right place in the Treasury site. Um, so yeah, sorry for bringing Ruby stuff into a Python conference. Um, <laughs> But <laughs> uh, so, if you don't know how Jekyll works, uh, you make basically you make text files that uh, at paths that represent the, the site structure, and then um, you can build a static site with that, uh, with some templating and so on. So I only scrape the menu once, and then I tell everything just build this menu, um, and then it's responsive with Bootstrap. Uh, if you guys like to style it, you're welcome to. Um, and I'm actually really excited, like. I've grown up to almost 100 sessions a week, and for me that is a big deal, uh, partly because it's the biggest website I've ever built, but when you start looking at um, who's using it, um, oh, around about August the 4th, um, usage picked up significantly. So I think just around the election, people went, okay, now it's time to sort of get the, uh, how are we going to sort of manage the, the municipality finances? I'm not sure when they... Um, I don't know. I don't know what it means, but around that date, like it was dead, 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 and then suddenly it picked up, which is cool. Um, and the 
the, the usage distribution is all over the country, like there's a long tail of, of which cities are using it, and the kind of things people are accessing are not really the reports of sort of planning from each municipality or their annual financial, financial statements. The things people are mostly accessing are how am I supposed to submit data back to the Treasury? So I think the users of this site are the, um, the people managing municipal finances, um, which I'm quite excited by. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm using Scrapey to scrape this website. Um, and I'm really excited about Scrapey. I, I tweeted them that I love them, and they were happy about that. Um, and it's, it's super simple. Basically, you start off with some sort of, uh, this is the technical bit, by the way, if you want to wake up from the, the boring, fluffy stuff. Um, you start off with start URLs. Uh, you, implement, you, you extend the spider class. And then um, it calls parse every time it uh, visits a web page and gives you the HTTP response. And then on that response, you, um, you just keep yielding items. And an item can be either another URL that you want to crawl or a, um, an item that you've defined um, based on sort of their definition of items. Um, so I, I yield some, some URLs to crawl the rest of the site, and then I, I yield page items. And um, yeah, so really simple example to, to extract the page title. I take the, because they don't have dynamic page titles, I do the current sort of page in the breadcrumb things. And I just use a CSS selector to select that. And um, then I've got the title element, or the, the element that contains the text. And then I use XPath. You can also use XPath for the whole thing. But then I use XPath to extract the text from that element and set that in the page item. Then I scrape some body stuff and maybe the, the table of links. And I yield the page item. And the page kind of looks like, um, it, in the end, you can get a, a JSON dump of, of those page items. and um, you put whatever you want in there. So I put the sort of URL where I got the file so that I can always link back to the original page. Um, you, um, and then I sort of get the breadcrumbs, the title, the path, so that that will be become the, the file that I write for Jekyll to, to render this page. Uh, and then body, um, which is really just the, the content area of the page. And I throw that HTML in there after sometimes I do some cleaning up. Um, so it, yeah, it's, this is really, really simple. It, my code is horrible, so you're welcome to come clean it up for me. Um, if, you probably have to do that if you want to extend it, but I, I'd love to help as well. Um, but you, you just produce this, and then I, um, I run a little script that uh, turns, that sort of iterates over all of these items, builds the pages, and it's trivial, and it takes like two minutes because there's about 30,000 pages, but um, yeah. I do this weekly. Um, so the first iteration of this was scraping periodically. Now, one of the reasons I'm in love with Scrapey is that they have Scraping Hub, and this completely falls in their free tier of um, scraping automatically. Um, so I have this. I push it, my spider up to their cloud. It runs every couple of days, scrapes. I download the, um, the JSON dump of the items uh, when I remember to, and I run my little script to rebuild the um, to create the, the Jekyll files, and then I push that to GitHub, and GitHub makes this nice, pretty st uh, um, static site. And for the, for the big, heavy spreadsheets and PDFs, I just link back to the original. My hope was that once Google knows about these things, it'll start indexing them. Um, that didn't work, um, so, but I'll get to that. The next iteration was I keep forgetting to rebuild the site, so I wanted to just um, get clone and update and push back on their free hosting. Because right now, I, mean, I have free scraping hosting and I have free uh, web hosting. Um, I just didn't want to use my internet or my memory. Um, but Git Python needs the, the native Git implementation. And um, I couldn't, you can't install that on the, their free platform. So I haven't solved automatic building yet. I still have to sort of download it to my computer. But we're getting there. Um, and the third iteration was just uh, pushing the resources to S3. And that's a nice um, a side effect of we, have, we now have this archive of all of the, the nation's municipal resources, uh, financial reports, which is quite cool. Um, and now you can see uh, more of the things coming up in Google results. Um, and to sort of to do that, pushing to um, 
to S3. Um, Scrapey has this idea of item pipelines, which just takes the stream of items in whatever order they're yielded by your, um, your spider, um, and you can handle them in whatever way you want to. So uh, I push them to, um, to um, my little bucket with the nice file structure in um, S3. Um, yeah, so that, that's my little baby. Um, another thing that was done at the, so th this is under CodeBridge, which is sort of the, the, uh, the movement or the idea of, of creating a tech community. So this was ma mainly some evenings with some beers sitting there hacking on things. Um, something else we did after a few beers was, just before the election, was decide, well, who are the candidates? Like there, there wasn't this clear list of who your, are your local candidates. Maybe it was in your paper, but like it's just ridiculous. I, I need to just have this app to say who are my candidates, who are your candidates, what are they like? Um, so we downloaded the list of candidates and put together this little site. Um, it was first it was hard coded in a Python thing and uh, in, a, in a Python module, and that was quite bad. And the, the address lookup didn't work, but we demonstrated that it works. And then we put it on GitHub told some people about it and su suddenly someone styled it um, and someone else um, I think made the, the address look up more robust and now you can just enter your address or use your location and figure out who are your candidates which is quite fun. Um, so s a lot of value delivered very quickly after some beer and pizza. Um, another one, uh, so Open Data Durban is working with us. That um, they're also sort of part of the CodeBridge movement, uh, and I don't know why, but this isn't happening so much in Johannesburg. Um, so if there are any Johannesburgers here, you guys need to pick it, pick it up. Uh, there is an organisation called Hacks and Hackers, like journalists and, and developers. Um, so work with them, but uh, like I think any city can just have people sort of pick up on the uh, using tech um, idea. Um, and this site is taking, I think it's census data and some other data to, of, of cities, different perspectives, so there's financial and there's demographics and, and things like that, um, trying to um, sort of visualize them in, in useful ways. Like, I think it's cool, I, I don't know enough about it, but um, we tend to argue for a, a code for a say of uh, knowing what you want to present and what you want to achieve with presenting data. Uh, but sometimes it's valuable to just throw something out there and see what people do with it. Um, and maybe you get a pull request that actually makes it sort of specific to something. Um, something else that someone did at our community evenings is um, they were frustrated or they, they've heard frustration about the um, community centers not being useful to people. And it's supposed to be a place where peop kids can come together, people can come, come together, but because of budget cuts, there weren't security guards anymore, so it wasn't a safe place for kids to, to come or anyone really to come and hang out. And the main revenue stream, I think they're, they're state funded, but uh, they, they can charge for things like weddings and, um, and um, functions and so on. So that's obviously the, uh, the kind of bookings that they would prefer. Um, so to start with, they just got the data from the city of where they are to, to map them. Um, and then the next step is to start um, making information available of what's the pricing structure, um, why is it like that, what should it be, uh, how do you book. Um, somehow we need to make that information accessible to communities um, and figure out how to make them more useful to people. But you can't measure what you can't manage, so uh, it's, it's worth knowing where they are and build up the data set like that. Um, so get involved, um, play with your city's data. Um, anyone here from other cities than Cape Town? Cool, cool, excellent. Uh, so um, like something really cool happens when you make data personal. When someone else, when someone can relate to the data and it's not just oh, the data over there, but it's data that relates to you. I think um, people suddenly start engaging with it and it gets interesting. Um, and yeah, show, show your city what's possible. They might not be positive because, I mean, it's not in their remit to, to listen to you, but um, um, yeah, the, a lot of the time there are civil servants who really want to make things good and uh, so, so just demonstrate. Um, and we, we ha we've had interns, um, 
you're welcome to take a sabbatical if you don't really want to sort of change your career from being a DBA to doing quite varied tech. Uh, just come to us for six months or a year. And um, but also, I think there's a lot of space for people to to do this full time. Um, it's the best decision I've made to change to do this full time. So uh, and tonight. I'm sure all of you will just want to relax uh, after being sort of receiving a lot of information, but we do have the community evening t tonight with some beer and pizza. Please RSVP if you want to come. Um, but it happens every, like twice a month, so um, just keep an eye on Meetup and, and please come, uh, tell, tell your friends. You don't have to come every week, but um, yeah, we have a lot of fun there. Thank you very much. JD, I think that's uh, fantastic. Uh, helping municipalities tell National Treasury, um, uh, like uh, making our government work. Fantastic. Okay, that's just great. Um, any questions from the floor? In terms of the data that's available, um, so as as coders, it's interesting to see, you know, what you can do with the data. Mm. But one of the triggers for that would be having a kind of a, a, a an idea of what data is available is there a central place where you can where you can kind of get an overview of what what exactly is available out there even if it's in a bad state at the moment there's a lot of that yes okay so nationally uh, there's a national data portal which we kind of took over the management of um, um, sort of working with with government with the DPSA um, and they they sometimes link to data sets from other departments or sometimes they, they just host the data sets from other departments and there's a lot of data available um, in the Cape Town there's the the city of Cape Town has a data portal as well um, and an example of that actually working we had a hackathon uh, at Codebridge once where uh, we wanted some data about sort of uh, neighborhood level water usage to sort of make people compete for being more effective with their water and we submitted a request for that data and okay sure um, I think it was like two three months later but eventually they put the data up there um, so you can actually like I've seen this happen you can ask the city for data and they provide it which is pretty cool uh, now if you know that data exists but you can't find it anywhere and you've asked nicely and you haven't received it there's the the PIA uh, which is Protection of Access to Information Act, um, where a lot of the projects that we, where we're using a lot of data, uh, there's been a PI request. And doing a PI request is free. Sometimes you have, you're charged for, for the data and you can ask for it in an electronic form or paper and then you pay per page. Um, but we get a lot of data through the PI process. Um, and the cool thing about PI is if they don't, if they say how much it's going to cost you and it's exorbitant and you take them to court and say and challenge that, um, then they've made an official response. So they're actually, they, they're very aware that they need to give fair re responses. Um, where can we find a list of all of the projects um, on GitHub? so that we can maybe make pull requests or something. Um, so if you, uh, I can, op no, I can't open it, uh, but uh, code for SA, so code the digit for SA is our account on GitHub. Um, all but one of the projects I've worked on are public projects. By default, our pu projects are public. Um, so um, that should be a good list. It doesn't introduce you necessarily very well to the project, but I mean, just dive in. We also have a list of projects and we blog about a lot of projects. Um, so visit our website and you could see a lot. Well, JD, thank you very much. That's uh, fantastic. Okay, what a, what a great talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.